Wayne here, and I'd like to thank Velatrek for sending me these two beautiful bikes, the Nomad one and the Discover one. These are both gonna be part of an upcoming uh, e-bike giveaway. So make sure you subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon, and keep watching for that video. Today, I'm going to review the Discover one. So let's get into that right now. This is a class two e-bike called the Discover one by Velatrek, and Velatrek is the correct pronunciation. They sent me over a sound file to make sure I got that right, and I thank them for that. Next up, I'll be unboxing the bike. Then I'll do a quick install, moving on to the specs. Then I'll take it out for a ride and go over some of my thoughts and who this bike is for. Looks like they did a really good job of packaging up the bike. Let you guys take a look inside the box real quick to see what they did. Looks really good to me, so I'm going to have Ron come over here and help me get the bike out of the box. The bike also has a toolbox or a toolkit, so we're going to get into that right now. Velatrek did a really nice job of packaging everything up, so I'm not surprised to see some nice packaging here. When you first open it, you've got like your quick start, probably a user guide in there. And on the inside, we have kickstand, so you're going to have to mount that on a tool kit, which is really nice to have. You've got your pouch with everything that you'll need to put the bike together and probably take with you when you go on a ride. Quick release for the uh, front wheel. Battery charger with some information. Some tubing to keep things nice and neat. Pedals, right and left. Let's see, oh, there's a bell to mount onto the handlebar. Some extra screws in case you lose anything. The light to mount and plug in. Your rear reflector, your front reflector. Now I probably won't install these because this is a giveaway and I will just Probably, I won't need those. I won't be riding the bike long enough to need them. And here's your display. So I'll be mounting that onto the handlebar, plugging in the blue and green wires. So that's everything in the toolkit. It's a really nice packaging job that Velatrek did. And I really appreciate them putting all these, these kind of small parts in a box for safekeeping instead of mounting them on the bike during shipping where they can get broken. So good job, Velatrek. Okay, let's start by getting rid of all this foam. Another thing is Velatrek wanted to tell me about the stem and I'm passing it on to you. There's two bolts here you need to loosen because the stem is mounted backwards. I think that's just to prevent it from poking through the box during shipping. So loosen these two bolts, flip it around, tighten them back up, make sure it's all lined up and everything, then tighten it up. And we're gonna do that right now. Next, we're gonna put the kickstand on. You're gonna to need to remove these two bolts right here. Okay, so now we're going to prepare to put the front tire on. You're going to need to remove this little protective piece for the brake pads right here. When you put the new tire on, the brake rotor will need to slide in between the brake pads. To remove this last piece, you'll just need to put your foot on it to hold it down while you lift the bike up, then kick it out of your way. Okay, so before you put the uh, front tire on, you're going to want to take the uh, supplied uh, front tire release skewer, I think that's what this is called. Take this nut off right here, and then after you get that off, take off this one spring. Place the skewer through the front wheel. 
put the spring back on and put this nut back on and you're ready to now put it on the bike. So let's check that out. So I'm alone here and when I'm alone, I'm just going to try grabbing from the front here and uh, raising it up and placing the tire in there or the wheel and see if I can get that brake to slide right between the pads like it just did. And there we go, it just plopped right in there. Okay, so now is a good time to go ahead and tighten the other side of the skewer. Don't over tighten, make sure that you can lock the other side down. And there you go. Time to put on the pedals. Make sure that when you do, there is a right and a left. Make sure the right goes on the right side, the left goes on the left side they tighten opposite directions. So right's clockwise and left is counterclockwise. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in clockwise. And I grabbed the wrench, by the way, out of the tool kit that comes with the bike. So you have everything you need. Do the same on the other side and you're done with the pedals. To install the front fender and the front headlight, I'm gonna start with the headlight. I've already pre-loosened this bolt here and the ones down below, let me get a close up. On the front fender, the top here, there is a bolt right here, a nut that's gonna to have to be loosened along with these two, one on each side for the fender. But for the headlight, all you have to do is loosen this up and line up those two holes right there with the holes right there. Push it through and then screw it on with the supplied screws and the headlight will be done. So let's get that in there. Let's screw these in. Okay, now to complete the headlight install, you have to connect these two color-coded cables together there's a pin right here to help you line it up. Line that up and then screw it down. Tighten it up and your headlight is done. You can make any adjustments you like. For the front fender, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these bolts here. Okay, so now I'm going to fit the fender through, get it all in place. I'm going to place the fender onto that screw and put the nut back on. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing down here below. I'm going to put these screws back in to hold the fender down. And that'll be it. So everything that you see here on the handlebar is already pre-installed. I'm gonna go ahead and install this bell. Push it onto the handlebar. And uh, put the screw back in and tighten it. That's it for the bell. Time to install the display. You're gonna need uh, these two screws that they give you that are gonna go in right here and here after you spread that apart and uh, push it onto the handlebars like so. All right, so then you're gonna go around back and you're gonna screw them in. Get the angle that you want. Don't over tighten anything with plastic. If you do, you risk pulling the screw right through the plastic and you'll have to replace the whole thing. So just snug. Now, once you have that done, match these cables up from the display. You got blue to blue. And again, you got these little pins to help you, help guide you in to put them in right to make that connection. And then you have a green 
to green. So once you've got that done, you probably are ready to ride. I think that's about it besides putting the battery back in. Okay, so put your battery back in. Make sure it's fully charged. Make sure it snaps in. And then uh, check your air, t air pressure for your tires. They hold 30 to 65 PSI. I put about 50 in and uh, tighten everything, go over everything, make sure everything's nice and tight. And uh, I'm gonna go over some specs next, take it out for a ride and uh, let you know my thoughts on the bike. Let's do that now. The Velatrek Discover One has a 48 volt, 500 watt rear hub motor with a max torque of 65 Newton meters. It has a Shimano seven speed derailleur and a 42 tooth chain ring. For brakes, it has hydraulic front and rear disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. It comes with front and rear fenders, a front light, and front suspension forks. Starting left to right, the handlebars is equipped with rubber grips, display controller, bell, display, Shimano 7-speed gear shift, throttle, and brake levers, which also have automatic motor shutoff. In the rear fender, it also has an integrated rear light. The tire size is 26 by two and a half inches. The Velatrek site says that they have a puncture resistant liner, but since I haven't removed the tire, that's something I can't verify. But if it has them, that's pretty cool. And taking a little closer look at the tread, I'd say that in addition to street riding, these tires would probably be fine for a little bit of uh, off-roading once in a while. The Discover One comes in both a high frame and a step through frame. This is the high frame, a standard high frame, which is an aluminum alloy frame, a down tube lockable battery section, plus all the cables are nicely tucked away, mostly inside of the frame. Wayne here with the Velatrek Discover One. We're gonna take it out for a ride today. So let's go. So today I'm on the Discover One from Velatrek, and it is a class two e-bike reaching speeds up to 20 miles per hour. Now, Velatrek says that you can unlock that, um, essentially turning this into a class three e-bike. Something I'm not gonna do, but if it's something you're interested in, you can contact them and they'll help you out. On the Velatrek website, it says that you can get about 65 miles on a full charge if you're using mostly pedaling and not really up in the modes and using your throttle a lot. Now, if you're using throttle only, it says that you'll get about 58 miles for the range. Now, that's gonna really vary, you know, on weight, hills, things like that. And if you're throttling out of mode one, like you're throttling mode two, three, and all that, the higher throttle modes, you're gonna eat into the battery a lot more. So, generally for me, I always say, half of whatever the manufacturer says you can comfortably count on. So another good thing about any e-bike is that you can ride these, you know, you could throttle through everything, pedal assist one, two, three, four, and five, or you could just leave it on zero and just pedal and use your gears. It has a seven speed Shimano gear shift here, and uh, you could just ride it like a regular bike too. So depending on how much exercise you want, you could ride it like a regular bike. And then when you get tired, you could just throttle yourself back home. So Velatrix says that it's, this bike can hold up to 440 pounds and can hold riders from 5'1 to 6'9. I'm about 5'7. This bike is extremely comfortable for me, easy enough for me to get on and off. If you're going, if you're about 5'1, 5'2, somewhere in there, you might want to go for the step through version. They have both and they have a lot of different colors. So no problems there. Take your pick, find the one that works for you and go for it. The display has a USB port that has a 500 milliamp and a five volts. So it's good enough to use, let's say your phone is dying and you need an extra little bit of juice. You can plug into that USB port. I myself not planning to do it. I don't like draining the battery any more than it needs to, but you know, that's not a lot. So if you needed to use it, you could. Just uh, have your phone on your handlebar, short cord over to the display port, 
good to go. I'm not gonna actually do a speed test, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a run here just so you can judge for yourself at how fast it goes through the power assist levels one through five. So I used a little power assist right there, a little throttle just to uh, get going. I'm in mode one and I'm about 8.5 miles per hour. I'm gonna go to mode two. You might've heard it kick in just now. Now we're going uh, 13 miles per hour. Sorry, I have to look over something to see how fast I'm going. 14 miles an hour. Mode three, still just pedaling, no throttle. 17 miles per hour. And mode five, you can really feel when mode five kicks in. 20 miles per hour. So it might've hit that before I looked too. So just so you get an idea, it's, it's, uh, it gets up there pretty quick. So who is this bike good for? I'd say uh, anybody that's got a commute, street riding, a lot of street riding, um, take it to the park, take it to work, take it to the store. They have front and rear racks that I believe you can get for this bike, so that would be nice to have. But uh, pretty much, yeah, anything. Uh, the tires are okay for maybe a little bit of off-roading, not a heck of a lot, but I think you could do a little bit with these. They're gum wall tires, which makes them pretty nice looking comfortable. I like them. Uh, if you want to go off-roading a little bit more, then you might want to check out their other bike called the Nomad One, which has uh, 26 by 4 inch tires, which would probably be a little bit better for some off-road ride. But for commutes, this is the way to go. I think this is an excellent bike for that. I'm going to go up this hill. Pedal assist five. No problems, 20 miles per hour. Pretty good incline if you're looking back there. Yeah, not bad at all. These handlebars are kind of uh, on, not on the wide side, but they feel fine for this bike. Well, what a great day to ride this kind of a bike around the park, probably around the lake. I might take the lake back when I go home. It's really nice. This bike is quiet, smooth, enough power. Should last a good long time. I'll be giving this bike away along with the Nomad from Velotrek coming up real soon. And I gotta say, I'm gonna hate to see them go. I've been enjoying these bikes a lot. Yeah, I'm mostly cruising around between mode three, mode four. Uh, if I want a little more exercise, I'd probably go down to two and three. But uh, three is a good sweet spot, which is where I'm gonna put it right now. And that keeps me at about 15, 16 miles per hour. And I can feel myself pedaling, so that's good. Not overdoing it. This bike rides well on the cement, on the street, and some light terrain. So if you're in the market for an e-bike and you like this one, check out my affiliate link below. It doesn't cost you anything extra to use it. And, um, if you want to wait to try to win it, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell icon, and wait for that video to come out. But if you're anxious, go ahead and purchase it now. It's a good buy. It's not overly expensive. Get yourself one of these Velotrek bikes. Get out there and ride, and I'll see you on the next one.